What I want to work on today is testing the idle power consumption of various uh, power inverters. These are very common ones that you're going to come across like on Amazon and you know you do a quick search for their for a certain uh, you know watt inverter and these are the less expensive ones that are probably going to come up. This is pure sine wave. All the other three that are here are modified sine wave. This is an old, old one that I purchased a long time ago and only used a couple times on, uh, you know, test, pro uh, test projects. This is an old Chicago Electric. Uh, I ordered it from Harbor Freight a long time ago. This one is a 2,000 watt running 4,000 watt peak modified sine wave. Then we have a 1,000 watt running, uh, 2,000 watt peak, right? A modified sine wave. Here's an 800 running, 1,600 peak, pure sine wave. And this is a little one. I, I use little these little ones on a bunch of small projects. It's a 500 watt, 1,000 watt peak. And this is, again, modified sine wave. You don't need a lot to do these tests. Nice to have a little clamp meter. I've got my one of my EG4 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries here, Life PO4. I am going to use the same clamp cable that on all of these units so that we don't change the wire size and the wire length or anything that may affect the results on these. What we can say though is that like upstairs in my garage I have a grow watt uh, 24 volt inverter a, a good system a nice system um, it's still brand new in the box I haven't even pulled it out yet for the project I'm, I have to grab some 24 volt batteries I have plenty of 24 volt uh, solar panels that type of inverter is far more efficient when it comes to the idle uh, power consumption and that's because what happens is that that unit when it can either shut down or greatly diminish how much power is being uh, consumed during idle when there's no consumption being you know used by the unit that is an expensive unit and, and it's designed for that type of stuff these things you turn the power switch on and it runs and that's it and you know if the fan runs constantly then that's going to draw power you have little lights you know anything that happens to be within these units it's always going to draw power. Some of these, like these, I like these because the small ones, the USB are pass-throughs. Even if you don't have the unit on and say it's connected to your, your solar, you can plug a USB device in here and get that USB charging or something from the unit without turning it on. Other ones, if you want to use the USB ports, you actually have to turn the system on to use it. So that's another consideration if you're looking for just a small uh, uh, inverter to use for a project. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start getting things uh, hooked up. And then I will start testing each one of these. I will write down everything. And at the very end, I will put up on the screen the end results of each one of these. And, you know, what the manufacturers are and the specs on it, real, you know, real quick and how much idle power consumption each one of these things draws. So to start out, your amp meter has to be able to do DC as well. So like on mine, I can change it from AC to DC, make the changes from there just by pressing certain buttons. And in this case, we're going to go right back there to DC. And then you want to zero it out. In my case, I just hold that button in and it will end up zeroing out this, this meter. Now, for purposes of this, I may end up showing it through a certain way just to have it facing the camera because you've got flow rates going one way or the other. All it's gonna do is one way shows negative on your gauge, the other way will show a regular positive reading. So, it doesn't really matter for our testing purposes which direction this is going in. So on the small one, let's 
turn it on and we're going to put our clamp here and you can see it's showing a negative reading just so it's easier to see and right now we are pulling about 0 0.25 0 0.24 to 0.25 we're going to call it 0.25 amps coming off of this particular unit at idle so now we're moving on to the 800 slash 1600 watt pure sine wave inverter and let's see what readings we're going to get on this one okay We are running about 0.6 right now, anywhere from 0.58 to 0.61, so we're going to call that one 0.6. And this one you're going to see does have a couple LEDs in front and that run all the time. It has a small fan in back. That fan it currently is not running. Yeah, it probably just runs when it heats up. So. Now we're going to move on to the 1000 slash 2000 watt modified sine wave inverter. And let's see how we go. Get that on. Let's see what we're coming up with here. Here we are running about 0.35. It is fluctuating a little bit. Um, and some of that is due to my movement, but uh, it's staying steady around 0 0.34, 0 0.35. So we're going to call that one 0.35. And again, this one, just a couple of LEDs in the front. Uh, no digital display that may be another reason why that other one had a little bit more draw you have a digital display on the front and here we're moving on to this large Chicago electric and you can hear that kick on you hear the fans running so let's get our test started with this one Right there, you can see 3.28, 3.26, 3.25. Much, much higher amp draws on this. We're going with 3.2, 3.22 is where it seems to be staying at. And this one. You can see it does have a little bit of display up here for the front. However, that fan you can hear, uh, I'm sure it was needed for this type of unit and how much you're going to be uh, drawing out of it as far as uh, uh, amperage. But uh, that right there takes a lot. We'll kill that. That fan itself probably draws a lot. So let's unhook this. So to find out how much actual power this thing is using, all you do is from your readings, you're going to take your amperage and then this is a 12 volt battery. So we know we're running 12 volt system. So you're going to multiply that amperage times your 12 volts and then that's going to give you your watts. And so I've done that with each one of these. And the first one, you can see that big unit, it had a lot of draw on that puppy. So you're getting 38.64 uh, watts of energy used at idle consumption. That little smaller one, the 1,000 uh, watt, 2,000 watt modified wave, you're getting 4.2 watts. The pure sine wave one, 
running 800 slash 1600 you're getting 7.2 watts and then the little small 500 watt slash 1000 watt uh, modified wave you're getting it uses 3 watts so as I mentioned before I'm gonna put up all this information in a slide real quick uh, just with the specs on it the manufacturers and what the tallies were just so you can get an idea of what you're gonna expect for if you're running a small system and you're only running one 100 amp hour battery and you know you're only using it for certain things and then you're letting it sit just sit there and you're not drawing enough juice off say you're using one 100 watt solar panel you may want to be concerned as to how much of that idle uh, um, uh, idle power consumption is being used up at that time. All right, so I'm going to throw that up on the screen, and uh, I hope this helps somebody out. I know I've had to check it out on uh, online before to, to uh, figure out and test uh, when I was checking on some of this stuff before. So hopefully it can help somebody else out uh, like it's helped me before. All right, thanks, guys.